Hello, everybody. This is Mike from Easy Sleeper, the Mike that plays guitar in the band, not the bad guitar. <coughs> Dog. <clears throat> the good guitar. That's me. Uh, anyways, just dropping in at the beginning of this episode to give a quick update and answer some urgent questions that we've been getting. First, quick update. This episode's going to be an interview that I did with our good friend Andrew Griffin from the L.A. band Heavy Penny. Uh, he sings and he shreds on guitar. Check them out. We're going to talk. Uh, ordinarily, we would have Alex, David, or Doug on here, but uh, let's just say you don't build bonfires indoors for a reason. No cause for concern. They're not dead. They're just extremely violently burned. Uh, multiple degrees, first, second, third, uh, bachelor, master. Anyways, they'll be back soon with brand new skin, so hang tight. Now to answer some of the questions we've been getting. Question one, it must be really difficult to release such amazing new music. All right, that isn't really a question, but I'll try to respond. Uh, yes, it is difficult, but we're all extremely powerful and capable musicians, so... We're blessed with a level of talent and intelligence that most people uh, could only dream of, so it would be a waste to keep it to ourselves. You are welcome. Next question. Where can I listen to your music? Is it out on vinyl? Uh, no. No, vinyl's dead, haven't you heard? Put the Crosley down, return it to Urban Outfitters, uh, and break out the streaming platform. No, just kidding. We'll be on vinyl at some point. That uh, That's a dream, but for now, we're on literally every music streaming platform, so good luck. Um, final question. When can I see you guys live? Nothing concrete. Obviously waiting for the guys to uh, heal up and get released from the hospital. Um, keep your eyes on our socials. We'll announce it. If you ask David, he gets really cranky and breaks stuff. Uh, we can't afford a new drum kit, so just hang tight, and uh, we will announce something very soon. Anyways, enjoy my chat with Andrew of Heavy Penny. Thank you for listening. <laughs> I mean, that sounds pretty fucking good, man. That sounds really good. Uh, as soon as the song started, it, it I was like, this this feels like a warm hug. And a it felt that hug. way. A warm hug. That's a very endearing way to put it. I mean, it, it's true. Like, I was just like, man, I, I feel like it. I should, if I had such things, I should be cruising with the sun going down in my convertible, you know, with the beach to my side. Like, that just feels really, really nice. Ladies and gentlemen, we're back on the Easy Sleepers podcast, and you just got the live reaction <laughs> to our newest single from our good buddy Andrew from the band Heavy Penny. Hello, hello. Thank you for having me. Uh, how you been, dude? Welcome to the podcast. Thank you. Um, it's a pleasure to be here, man. Um, been good. Been very, very good. Uh, you know, it's been uh, a wild year. Mm. uh start you know 2023 2024 is off to a a good start we are uh very much so like you guys we're rounding third on our uh our first full length lp and uh we're very excited to get that out sometime uh you know soon hopefully hopefully this year um not hopefully this year that's bullshit hopefully this summer yeah you know that that's the that's the target so we're looking for that, man. Um, how you been? Good, dude. I hear it. It sounds like yeah. you've been great, man. Yeah, we. Uh, this is Mike, by the way, for Hi, everyone Mike. listening. And uh, we're stoked to have the next song out from the album. I think everyone's been digging Timekeeper. It's so good. It's been a lot of fun. We've gotten man. awesome feedback, and I think uh, I think we're all really pumped to have this next one come out, and I'm glad you're one of the first to hear it dude such a pleasure i mean timekeeper um it's excellent i mean you guys are a really good band like i've i've had the pleasure of knowing you and you know sharing the bill with you a few times now over the last 
what, three years or so? Two and a half, three? I've known you probably three or four. Yeah. I think with the bands, maybe two. Two? God. It feels so much longer, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah, Um, really. I mean, you guys, y'all are always great. You always put on such a great show. Um, Thank you. You have a very distinct sound that um, I really, really enjoy. Um, I, I was, you know, I've said it before. The guitars always are so cool and so specific on your material and um i I, i'm really excited to see what this new uh the full thing sounds like and you know i i have had the journey of watching you guys and seeing you guys and watching you grow and i really feel like you have hit like a new level and it was always great but i mean you want to get better right and i think i mean from what i've heard from um what's the the song i just heard pleasure thrills pleasure thrills oh yeah and it sure does <laughs> uh the from timekeeper and pleasure thrills uh there's another song in there that i i, I have heard which is also fucking awesome yeah we're not naming this we're one not yet. naming it just yet it's in the vault it is it 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 is on your radio soon and <laughs> i mean it i think y'all have really turned a corner and have gone from being a really really great band to i mean excellence like uh it's it's really good thank you you should feel really good about that man thank you dude yeah i'm I'm very proud to to hear it and to know you guys you know what i have to say to that is it beer clock i think i have to say cheers to that oh, dude you know what it cheers wow. to that. what about it oh perfect we love that oh you know what else we need to do what's that Let's get the vibe right on the lighting. Let's get the vibe right on the lighting. It is a it's a bit bright in here. We're and en- we're about to enter. That was what you said that last time. Okay. Andrew <laughs> hasn't been here for a year. And it was before I had lights that I could adjust. Did you get the Phillips? And he view? was like, Hey man, great place. You gotta do something about the lights. <laughs> this is not Ooh. the vibe. <laughs> Let me now, describe what I'm saying for you viewers or listeners. Um we got blue, we got red, we got pink, and we got Oh, you know what? Let, let's see. Oh, it is a Phillips Hue. How about that? Uh, you know what? My man, Phil. Uh, my man, Phil. Not to be confused with Uncle Jeff. Not to be confused with my man, Hugh. Ooh. I'm dig. Oh, shit. You take your pick, and then... Well, I clicked on something. It... Then I got some questions for you. How do I... I, I set Just once? Hit... Yeah. Gorgeous. I like it. Just like you, Mike. Aw. 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 What do we go with? Uh, I don't fucking know. It's some sort of kind of fuchsia, fuchsia. coral blend. Yeah, a blush, maybe even. Yeah. Okay. Well, how about we start these questions, Andrew? All righty, lay on me. Big old question number one. Mm. What has Heavy Penny been up to lately? Man, um, we have been recording our first full-length record um, at Boulevard Studios in Hollywood, um historic spot huh yeah it's it wasn't called boulevard at the time but uh pink floyd did the wall there i think fleetwood mac did some shit there too um maybe you've heard of them yeah you you know small time stuff yeah indie Um, indie bands from back in the day yeah you know uh they never did much but uh (laughs) it's a really incredible sounding room they have a shit ton of amazing gear there um we got really lucky our drummer um works there and so we were able to record there and like um you know we all have our own guitars and everything for those of you at home i am the lead singer and usually rhythm guitarist but right now i've been playing bass and uh pardon me uh like i was playing on like a 71 fender p bass and it was just the most buttery thing i've ever played and it sounded so good and it felt so good and um it's coming along, man. It's really coming along. Um, we're excited to share with everybody what we've been up to. Uh, this is the kind of culmination of two years of hard work of writing songs together as a band, and um, we're excited to show it to everybody. It's gonna That's be a, it's gonna be cool. Great segue into the next question. Mm. How do you reflect on the last two years with the band and? Uh, what would you have done differently or, you know, how, how do you feel like the last two years have gone? And Yeah. Um, I mean, the last two years have been wild, right? Like it's, we, 
Nick Donahue, uh, the lead guitarist and myself, formed the band in late 2021. Um, we hit it off immediately and we're like, this is going to be awesome. Let's hang out. Let's jam. We jammed um, and then it was perfect. And then he was like, well, there's this guy that I work with. His name's Noah, Noah Dearborn. He's a drummer. I've never heard him play, but from what I can tell, he's probably pretty good. We jam. It was amazing. I mean, the dude is, if I am so bold to say, uh, this, maybe I won't be as so bold to say, but the guy is, he's Bonham, dude. I mean, you've seen I've him. I've seen him play multiple times, and yeah, he's the real deal. He really is, no man. Doubt. I mean, the guy doesn't play crash cymbals because he hits too hard, and they're all just a bunch of different rides, which is awesome. And, you know, we hung out, and then uh, a buddy of ours uh, named Terrence LeClaire, he was our original bassist. He, um, dude, just talk about the nicest guy you've ever met. Like, yeah, uh, a little bit older than us, uh, which, you know, just in a different stage of life, which is ultimately why we ended up uh, amicably parting ways. But, I mean, he was one of the original pennies, which was cool. And we did a lot of great work and we wrote, you know, some cool music uh, with that four piece group. And we gigged a lot at first. And then, like everything else, uh, COVID. COVID, yeah. uh, I think, if I remember correctly, maybe, I think Terrence and I, actually, when we recorded our first EP called the Heavy Penny EP, which you can listen to on streaming. Um, we were going to record vocals. Uh, we did all the music at uh, Jake Williams' house, who's uh, one of the members of Spectre Jones and plays with us uh, from time to time. Uh, they have a cool recording studio up in the valley, so we recorded our EP there. And when it was time for me to record vocals, I was like, man, I really don't feel good. This, this, is, not, this is not great. And Terrence had let us know earlier in the day. We had a gig that week, and he was like, "Hey guys, I have COVID, so we're I I can't do it." And we were like, "Yeah, man, that makes sense." I mean, it's early, um, twenty two at this point. Yeah, early twenty twenty two, and I'm in the booth like recording our shit, and I'm like, "Man, I really don't feel good." And sure enough, I had COVID. Um, so COVID kind of slowed us down as it did a lot of bands and a lot of art at the time. And then we played uh, a really cool gig. At, were you at that gig? The warehouse gig? Did you come to that one? I don't know. I, it when was, in, when like, was the, it? The movie studio that's... Oh, oh, the white room? Yeah, the white room. What no, you, I, you invited me and my, and my brother, but we were, I think, out of town. Like, I think, I think that, it was, yeah. like, a we had, like, a family thing going on. I think, like yeah, that. that sounds about right. So we played there, um, which was really, really cool. Heath Ryan, who um, has a movie studio out here, um, is just a real lover of music and gave us the opportunity to play at these events. Uh, it looked so cool. It was cool, I mean, cool, the footage man. from it and the photos looked so cool. It was, it was really, really cool. I have, actually, one of them framed, and I gave the band members as, like, a gift or whatever. And that was really cool. And then um, we lost our bassist, and that kind of pumped the brakes on it for a little bit. And then we've had other friends uh fill in jake uh williams who I, I mentioned before from specter jones he plays with us from time to time and he and i will kind of switch hit on uh drum uh, no, pff, not drums not <laughs> once have i ever thought about playing drums in this band uh guitar and bass and then he was we, with you at molly malone's i think one time i saw he, he yeah was. he's played with us at molly's um and then he uh has played with us at state social house and then we have another buddy who actually is our old neighbor you and i um nick hodges who is a session player um he filled in for us and you talk about just a wonderful musician that guy fucking nails it every time session guys uh, session like it was funny like we didn't get a lot of time to rehearse with him and because he's a very busy guy i mean well above like he is well above our pay grade, you know, he's just a monster and we rehearsed with him once. And then we were like, Hey, we just want to rehearse with you. Like at least before the gig and we were playing Molly's, which we love Molly Malone's. And he came in and it had been like a couple weeks since we had seen him. And he was perfect. And he was doing amazing shit that I can't even fathom. And we're just like session players, man. I think I said on the last episode we did, 
this is like one of the only places where you'll meet somebody that's like the most ungodly musician at whatever their instrument is and then they got to be like teaching a class tomorrow at 9 a.m. at (laughs) high school or like whatever their day job is it's like some of the most talented people in the world and they're you wouldn't know it you know you see them in in ralph's buying dinner for that night or something yeah it's like just i mean if you ever get a chance um honestly i feel like you guys would be a great you know compliment to one another uh his band called soviet jesus choir Oh, uh, the old household favorite. The old household favorite, Soviet Jesus <laughs> Choir. Uh, first time I heard that, I was like, that's a great fucking name. <laughs> like, it, is, it really is. It's such a good name. And they're really, really excellent. Um, he, uh, you know, that's his main main passion. And just talk about, like, somehow everybody, like, I love Nick and Noah. They're amazing, wonderful guys. Uh, you know, the kind of guys who will give you the shirt off their back, but like all the guys that we've had play bass, like I describe as like the nicest guy you're ever going to meet. Like you're the fucking nicest guy you're ever going to meet. Like I've, I've there's, he's lying. It's I'm not lying. (laughs) The musicians in this town, your whole band are the nicest fucking guys you'll ever meet, man. Like I think the, the stigma of being an asshole in this industry you better be really good if you're going to be a prick. Yeah. That only works at like the highest level. Yeah, you know, and you, even you can't... like like yeah. um for instance, um Nick's uh roommate Carl Wingate who is let me put some respect on that name, uh <laughs> Grammy award winning Carl Wingate. He engineered Steve Lacey's record. Um, oh, I met him. Yeah. Yeah, I met him outside at your one of your parties at yeah. one time. Carl, yeah. nicest nice dude, dude ever. Oh, yeah. Works at uh he worked at the village. Mhm. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, nice dude. Yeah, he literally was in the trenches with Steve Lacey and I mean Steve Lacey, that's he's getting huge, man. And he was like, Steve is the coolest fucking guy you're ever going to meet. Like, Steve got... He seems uh, like he would be cool. Yeah, he does. Like, yeah. everything I've seen from him, I'm just like, you seem like a cool guy. And then to have somebody who knows him and works with him. And, like, Carl, he and I would be, you know, having a beer on his porch or whatever. And then he'd get a text and be like, oop, got to go. Steve needs to... <laughs> and, like, would take off and go do some shit with Steve. I mean, Steve. That, that was, like, a big-time gig. Yeah. All, all the gigs that that, that that guy was doing were pretty... Oh, yeah. Legit. Yeah, I mean, you talk about a guy who knows his shit. Carl is, I mean, and it, it couldn't happen to a better guy. Like, uh, I got to see his Grammy. <laughs> like, he he hit me. I up. held one before in a job interview, and it's the most intimidating, <laughs> intimidating thing of all time. It's like Dude, heavier than you think it would be. <laughs> heavier than you would think. Like, he hit me up, Shiny. and like, he was like, "Do you want to see my Grammy?" And I was like, "Yes!" And so I, I, I first time I'd it? ever seen one. And I went over and it's just sitting on top of his guitar amp in his uh, his living room. And I'm just staring at it. And I'm like, this is the coolest fucking thing I've ever seen. <laughs> and to know somebody, you know, who actually like worked on it. It's not like, oh, I found this at a thrift shop, you yeah. know, whatever. It's like this guy worked hard Legit. for it. Yeah. His and name's so, on it. Yeah. I mean, so cool. It seems like in my experience working at a studio, the people at the highest level – or like the higher levels oftentimes are really, really cool. Yeah. It's like the new young just signed a record deal and they're 20 and they just moved to LA that like think they can come in and boss people around, not realizing that everyone knows everyone. And yet if you're a dick to some, someone, they're going to tell everyone they know, Hey, yeah, I worked with him. He sucks. Um, I've heard a million stories about people doing stuff at a studio and then leaving and the owner calls everyone they know. And then they try to book at a different spot and they, they don't let them and they say why. And they're like, I heard what you did at, yeah. you know, sunset sound. And I mean, they don't realize everyone's connected and that that's yeah. not really a thing you do anymore. We're not in the rock star era where you can just walk around and like spit on the floor and there's no repercussions. Yeah. Like, I mean, even, I don't know, man, like I, I try to live my life and I, I know you do too. It's like, It is not hard to be nice to people. Yeah. Like, it's so easy. And, I mean, in a town like this, with as much talent as there is, like, it's, like, you nailed it. Like, as much as I wish it was the 70s and everything, it's not. And, you know, like, I'm not saying that he was like this. You never heard this. I know he used to do a lot of drugs and would be kind of lazy in the studio or take his time in the studio. But, like, Keith Richards, man, like... You're not Keith Richards. Like, you don't have the ability to be a prick. And if you are, why, dude? Like, 
what is the guy who is recording your shit or, you know, like the person who's changing out the mics, nobody has done anything to deserve that from you. And I don't know. I think that is one of the nice things about this day and age is that I think we're kind of less tolerant of people not being cool. Yeah. Um, people are way more connected than they used to be. You can't just be an asshole and move on with your life. Yeah. Well, you're a text message away. Yeah. You know, and it, you don't even have to pick up the phone anymore and hope that guy's home. It's like, literally, I'm going to text this guy right now and say, oh, this dude, bad news bears. You know what? I'd always ask myself if, if they would, people would act up some of the bigger artists. I'd be like, what? what would you do if I wasn't here or if I didn't want you to be here? Like mm -hmm. I'm the only guy working at this place. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like you're, you can't be that much of an asshole to me. Like I'm not a genius that's influencing your music, but yeah. you kind of need me tonight. You know what yeah. I mean? <laughs> you you kind of need to be here right now. You can't screw this up. Like yeah. there's a lot of money on the line. Um, I just wanted to ask them, yeah, I know I'm not your producer, but like, you can't fuck me over. You can't fuck everyone over. You yeah. kind of need to get this done. I mean, it's wild to me, but I mean, every team, every Grammy that's won is a big team. Like you, yeah. Like Carl, like he's maybe not on the stage, and not everyone knows his name. But yeah. every one that has like some winning album, there's a bunch of people behind that. Yeah. That I mean, have a lot of influence on it and put a lot of work into it. Well, and just you know, being instrumental to your success and everything, and like. I don't know, like, uh, I was talking to your brother Danny just before we got in here, and, you know, he works with a lot of high-end talent, and he was saying, you know, there's a lot of people who are really, really cool, and then there's people who just look right through you. And, yeah. you know, it's it's the people, like, if I was in that situation, and, you know, he said, like, one guy at the end of the day, like, they ordered food, and he was like, hey, man, I'm really, really happy that you were here today, and, like, you did great. Like, I didn't finish my soup. Like, here you go. And, like, gave him his soup. I ate that for dinner four nights ago. <laughs> I ate that exact soup, and it was delicious. <laughs> there you go. See? I but mean, that, that, those are the people you end up working with again. Like yeah. It's, and, and I only speak for myself. I don't, I'm don't. i not doing his job, but yeah. I had a similar job. And, like, I didn't see the same people twice when they acted up. Yeah. Yeah. It wasn't my, you know, I didn't, I wasn't in charge of blacklisting people from booking and whatnot, but... Yeah. If it doesn't go well, usually you're not going to see them again for no. you know, whatever reason. So, well, and I think, man, like at the end of the day, like they make their own lives harder by doing shit. Yeah, like exactly. I mean, like I am not, you know, I know y'all are uh, largely self-produced. Y'all are killing it, man. Like y'all, y'all are you. touring. You're doing everything that you need to do. And I mean, y'all are putting in the effort and it's really admirable and it's very inspiring. Cause it's like, that's what a new band, like, who isn't a household name, who isn't opening up at the Fonda even or whatever. Like, that's what you need to be doing. And y'all are doing all the right stuff. Like, I just, um, I don't see, like, why, I, I don't know. I, I think at this point I'm just kind of rambling on this, this topic. This is what a podcast is. This is what a pod, I'm just, I want to Guys be. Guys rambling to each other. That's true. Beer. That's true. I just want, hey man, cheers for the beers. Cheers Full throttle for the, the bottles. beers. <laughs> Um, like I don't have the, the, like at Boulevard, man, like big names go through there and you know, like we have, he's kind of mixed and engineered, uh, a little bit of what we were doing. Um, his name's Greg White and he works at Shangri-La with fucking Rick Rubin. Jeez. Like, you know, like, you know, Shangri-La. Like, what? Who? Rick who? Yeah, like, right? <laughs> like, he's literally, like, he was showing me uh, uh, pictures of Dogstar, uh, which is Keanu Reeves' band. Like, he literally was recording Dogstar. And he can't talk about any of this shit, like, publicly. Like, I don't know if I'm getting him in trouble right now. I don't think I am. Um, but, like, imagine if, like, I'm at this studio. Nobody knows who I am. Nobody knows who our, our band is, and we're acting like absolute fools. Not a good look. Not a good look. Like, I don't know, man. Music's too good. Music is too sacred, and it's too awesome. Like, I would... They say don't meet your heroes. That's not necessarily true. I've gotten to meet my heroes a couple times. My favorite band is a, a southern rock band from Texas, uh, Tyler, Texas, called Whiskey Myers, and 
I've seen him a lot of times. Like, I think I've seen him 15 or 16 times. You've showed me lots of YouTube videos of I, these guys. I'm so sorry. No, uh, no, it's, it's a good, it's a good thing. They're killer. They are. And killer. I've gotten to meet them a couple times. Live. Dude, they're so good. They are, you know, uh, very much so how my band, we consider ourselves to be a live band. They're a live band. Like their records sound amazing, but you go see them live and it's a whole different game. I would um, love to see you guys open for them. Oh in my the god! I mean, Dude, I feel like I, that would just be mm, such a bill. It, that would be that would be. I could die happy, <laughs> as they say. Uh, it's funny. We went to uh, see them November of two thousand twenty-two, I think, and yeah, twenty-two. And I brought Nick, the lead guitarist, with me, um, and my buddy Mitch. Uh, who's a phenomenal actor uh, out here, but he came with us because we had the extra ticket. And there was a band at the time called the Reed Southall Band, who was another Southern rock band opening up for them. Now they're just called Southall. Um, but they were really, really good. Like, really, really good. I mean, they they are, they will be a really big name. And, I mean, they're killing, like, they have a, a song called Sticking and Moving, which is, if you like that, like, Southern 70s thing, you should check it out. Um, and they were awesome. And then Whiskey Myers came on and Mitch, who is not a music guy. He's, I mean, he loves music, you know, loves music, but he's not a musician, not, you know, uh, not anything in that regard at all. Literally looked at me as soon as they came out and they started playing. He goes, Oh, that's a fucking band. And I was like, yeah, dude, like you can just tell, I mean, but they've been in the trenches since 2007. So, I mean, they're, they're coming in on 20 years. They're one of the bands that when you watch a video on YouTube, no matter when you see it, you're like, oh, this is a legit band. They could be from a lot of time periods, they honestly. They could, but yeah, definitely. They have whatever X factor that bands have that they need to be legit, that like for decades yeah. have needed to be a big band. And you can just tell, even if you're not into the job, like I'm not into Southern rock that much, yeah. not, not anywhere near as much as you. Sure. Um but they're great. I mean, every mm-hmm. clip you showed me and all the songs are are sick, undeniably. Yeah, I mean, that's that's such a testament good music, to good right? music is that any genre, yeah. any fan can admit that it's pretty cool what you're doing. Yeah, I think that time. that's the big thing is like if somebody is doing something good, you recognize it. And unfortunately, in this day and age, it's a catch twenty two, right? Like with a laptop and you know a guitar or whatever plugins or whatever you're using somebody can make a full record i forget i think it was kendrick lamar they made like yeah. a full record on garage band and it's it maybe won a grammy or I, I i could be wrong about yeah, there, that there's like movies that were shot on iphones too yeah. that are you like know. people can do amazing things with this but it's also opened the window for anybody can do this and so whenever you do see something really really special that's what's exciting and that's how i feel when i see you guys like when I watch all these other bands, like there's a lot of great bands who play with you guys, but y'all are in kind of a league of your own. And um, it sounds specific and it sounds like Easy Sleeper. And I could I say the same about Heavy Penny. It's like thanks, you have man. from song to song, you know who it is. It's not like, thanks. Is this one a cover? Like, yeah. You know, yeah, yeah. you know it's Heavy Penny when you hear it. You try. And I think that that's when it comes down to like, okay, I take this seriously. I love what I do. And you're honest with the music. Exactly. Which is the the most important thing. That, that was the, yeah. I think you people underestimate the general public's interpretation of how honest your your music is. I think people think that they can make whatever and that's their image, but I feel like most people can see through, Yeah. you know, what's, what's honest songwriting and what's not, I like to think. Well, and back to Mr. Rick Rubin. Um, he... In this day and age, you know, we all see reels and TikToks and everything all the time. And I, I do my best to not do that just because of, <laughs> I hate being on social media, man. Like, yeah. it's I wish it was the 70s and I wish that I could just play a bar and some dude from Capitol is <clears throat> having his Tom Collins or whatever. It's like, you guys are fucking great. Here's your life. He has a contract in his briefcase <laughs> yeah. and he's hammered and he gives you a pen. Oh, Sign it now. My God, I, it would be the best thing ever. That, those days don't, don't exist anymore, so, yeah. you know, we do have social media, and um, Rick Rubin was talking about how you kind of have to selfishly make music. You have to make music for yourself. Like, he, I think the, the tagline of the video that I saw is, like, the audience should be the last person you're considering, and I love that, 
because I, not in like in a, um, egotistical or narcissistic way, but like when we fucking throw something down, I listen to it in my car for like two or three weeks after, because one, I'm enjoying it. And two, I'm like, okay, we have the framework for this amazing, cool song. Oh, hello. Um, how can I make it better? You know, and listening to your own music, if you do it in a way that is self-indulgent, then what are you really getting out of it? But if you listen to it, I... I you gotta be a, constructive with it. Yeah, exactly. Like, as a sports analogy, it's like watching game tape. Yes. You know what I mean? Yeah, watching film. Yeah, exactly. Like, you're just like, how can I make this better? And you can't do it going, well, what do I think people are going to want? No. You go, what would I do to make this better? How? What would make me enjoy this more? And then ultimately, that's what's going to make people enjoy it. I had a guy, uh, a good buddy of mine, another amazing actor. I got an acting degree um, <laughs> back in college, but he was a buddy of mine, uh, really phenomenal actor. His name's Nick Ortiz, but he was a drummer. Um, still a drummer, like in his own like free time, whenever he wants to be. Uh, he's a really good drummer. And once he and I, we kind of had a, a, a band with a drug dealer <laughs> in New York. Yeah. New York. Yeah, dude. When I lived in New York, this guy fucking. I forgot you lived in New York. I lived in New York for a while. And this guy named Attica. So in New York, before we was legal, you had to <laughs> call up a fucking like service. And then a delivery guy would come in with like his lockbox into your apartment. Like, and it was always a little sketchy. You're like, are we? Like, is this a sting? Like, what's going to happen here? Like, I'm not exactly sure. Whatever. I had my uh, my Les Paul, the one with the P90s, in the corner of my living room. And he came in and, like, sat down and, like, was like, we got in because we got... Are you a guitarist, man? <laughs> and I was like, yeah, dude. He's like, I'm a singer. And I was like, sick. He's like, you want to start a band? And I was like, fuck it. Yeah, let's do it. So me... Atticus, who had an amazing range, he's more of a metal guy, and you know, we're more of like that hard rock kind of thing. But um, he was amazing, and then Nick is a drummer, so we all got together and jammed. That fizzled out once Atticus um, had a baby um, that he was not expecting, and so uh, wah, wah. yeah, you hate to see it, but he um, we we split, but I then continued on making music. And I sent it to Nick and I was kind of worried, man, because at that time I wasn't making music that was, it was, it was just coming out of my mind. It wasn't coming out of, you know, like now I bring a song with some lyrics and some chords to the band and Nick and Noah improve on it. And we, we create this song as Heavy Penny. It's not just an Andrew song, it's a band song. And it's what makes a song this good to this good, right? And, um... I sent it to Nick and I was just like, kind of like, man, I'm a little worried. And he was like, if you're making something from the heart, don't be worried about it. He was like, people will gravitate towards it, you know? And that's something that is stuck in the back of my mind. Every time I create a new song or something, because I, I never try to make a song or anything. And I mean, I'm sure y'all are the same way. Like y'all have such a cool, distinct sound that I feel like is new and it is kind of um, evolving and it's taking a lot of things from other things and then creating this new sound. We are doing a very much so an old sound and trying not to rip off anybody. Like I fucking love Greta Van Fleet. I love them. I'm so happy we have new Led Zeppelin, but we have new Led Zeppelin. That is Greta Van Fleet. Yeah. We're trying to be ourselves and we just so happen to sound like we're from the seventies, you know? Um, and so but that's what you like. That's what I love, man. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I wish it was like 77 right now. I wish your Camaro was parked out front, Oof. you know, like I, you know, it would be fucking amazing. Right. But it's not, um, but that's the shit that we were raised on and that's what speaks to us. And so um, <clears throat> you just got to do what comes from your heart. And if you're doing something from your heart, I don't think it'll ever be contrived or uh, a ripoff. So for anyone that doesn't know, Andrew and I met uh, 
because we were neighbors. We just happened to move into <laughs> the two houses next to each other. Yeah. Um, and so for at least a year, yeah. And when, one, after we met, Andrew would come over, and he'd bring his laptop and a guitar, and he'd come into my garage where I had my you know studio, quote unquote, set up and my instruments and. He would show me a lot of these songs on GarageBand, these demos he made in his bedroom right across the fence. <laughs> and I've seen them now on, you know, stages around L.A., and they're just like these big sonic masterpieces that mm. you've developed from essentially bedroom demos into like high-energy full band uh, pieces. So how would you, you know, what advice would you give to younger songwriters that want to take their ideas that they're writing in their bedroom like you were doing and expand on them and take them to the form they really should be in, like like you managed to do in somehow a really short amount of time? I got lucky, man. I got lucky. Um, I found a band. I, I moved to L.A. I was you made some right decisions. It wasn't all luck. Sure. What led you to finding Heavy Penny and getting these songs to the way they are? Talk to everybody. Talk to fucking everybody. You like, talk better than anyone I know. <laughs> <laughs> that thank you. That uh, the the joke in my band is that um, I am the social butterfly, uh, and you know I I do that. You know Nick and Noah are more. Um, they're more reserved than I. I I've been once told I can make friends with a rock. I would find common ground with a rock. Um, Do you remember ha- exactly how we met that one night? Because was that the Halloween party? Yeah, or, that was no. when. Uh huh. Yeah. It was not. It was not going well. It was not going well. You didn't do anything wrong. I, well, no, I I did not. So... Basically, I just my roommate <laughs> came to me and said, "Hey." This this guy, he's calling. This, there's a guy outside. We're having a party at our house. He's <laughs> there's like, this beer guy's pong up, in there's the driveway. A, there's beer pong in the driveway. We're you know it's one of those parties. We just it's a good party. Whatever. We were letting things happen. My roommate comes in and he's like, "There's a guy outside on the phone. I think he's calling the cops. I want to kick his ass." Mind you, I met Andrew like once before, and I think you <laughs> saw me like with an amp or something. Yeah. And And we met once, and you were like, "Do you play guitar?" And I, yeah. I don't remember, but briefly we met. And so he's like, I'm going to show, I'm like, it's about to go down. And I walk out and I was like, dude, that's our neighbor. And he's like, why is he on the phone? And I was like, that guy's really cool. Let me go talk to him for a minute. And I was like, yo, Andrew, you're not calling the cops, are you? And you're like, dude, I'm no, like my friend's pulling up. I'm just trying to make that's sure we girlfriend. find a place to park. I was trying yeah. to, I'm like, and I was you like, should find parking. You were like, why is he so mad? And I was like, dude, we're good. We're good. Come around here. Let's have a beer. We ended up having a blast, and then we pretty much hung out like a couple times a week from then on out. Yeah. And that was a year of like, I wasn't an easy sleeper at this point. No. Heavy Penny didn't exist at this point. It did not. So we were showing each other these laptop demos in my garage with, you know, the door up because there was no AC. So it's crazy to be at this point and see, you know, both of our paths. But in particular, you wrote a lot of these songs and then developed a band and expanded them. Yeah. How does that happen? How do people do that? Well, I mean, I think ultimately you have to, unless you're going to be the Mike Cadigan band, you know, or the Andrew Griffin Project or Mm -hmm. whatever, you have to find people who you gel with, man. Like you have to find people who are, you know, people you can confide in and people largely who share your fucking taste in music, man. Cause it's like, if I'm trying to make a record that sounds like Leonard Skinner and then, you know, the lead guitarist is like super into Bob Marley, like, don't get me wrong. I love Bob Marley. I reggae is the shit, but that's not a conducive sound to one another. You have to find the right people who you can build a um, musical relationship with. And I got really lucky. And I, I mean, I know you did too. Like, yeah. 
y'all all gel and you see it when you see you guys play live you go those guys fucking understand each other like i'm like okay you know what like at any given moment i know you know what doug and david are doing and every time i see you guys play it i'm like are they brothers like have they known each other for a decade right it just you can tell when something meshes correctly yeah neither of our bands are at a level where you can like just pay someone to do something they don't want to do and, no. and shut up or like <laughs> you got to keep in mind where you can't skip some of the steps to being a big band so like yeah you have to be at a point with the people in your band where you can sleep in a hotel room in the same bed together yeah. or like be in a car with you know no room around you for hours and hours a day yeah. for multiple days like you have to do that as a band trying to come up and yeah. we're both bands trying to come up and there's it's kind of a non-negotiable. I mean, it's just yeah. if you really don't get along, it's there's like no way around it. Well, unless and, you have the money or exactly. you know, someone's bankrolling but you. Even then, to, man, I to don't. Do I so I mean, the best example of it is the Who, Roger Daltrey. Who the Who? Oh, who are you? Who 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 who, who? who's on first? What's on <laughs> second? Uh, <laughs> uh, I mean, Roger Daltrey. <laughs> That was the most old head bit ever. Oh, my God. For you kids out there, that's what they call comedy. <laughs> um, Roger Daltrey, the lead singer of The Who, and Pete Townsend, the lead guitarist and songwriter of The Who, historically fucking hate each other. But they're like, well, we have a great working relationship. And yeah, dude, if you're in The Who, fine. Fine. If that's your full-time gig and it's, yeah, dude, you know, you're, you're in famous, one of the- that's... Yeah. You can shut up and play your part it's every fun. now and then. And it's I can no I can tolerate you for an hour or two on stage and whatever. These but, are passion projects until their job, yeah. until their careers. Yeah, you know exactly. I mean? And then, you know, it does become a business. Yeah, um, totally. But I never, I think that's so sad, right? Because I love The Who, man. Like Roger Daltrey is a, when I'm on stage... I'm not trying to mimic him, but I'm trying to bring that fucking ferocity that he brings. Cause like, if you want to know what it is that drives me as a singer, I have a rock voice. Like I, I, I don't, I'm not a, a, a beautifully sounding man. Like I'm, I can sing rock and roll just fine and it works for what I'm doing. And for that, I'm very grateful. Go listen to that first verse of who are you? Um, and, you know, he comes in and I woke up in a solo door. And you're like, damn, dude, like you're ready to fucking run through a wall. I've always said who albums all they almost sound live to me. Oh, like, yeah, because man. they're they're always performed in a way. And it's oh. almost like they're mic'd up far away or something where it sounds. It sounds like they can't not play with their their oh, full yeah. energy. So I, I get it. You know? I mean, yeah. And it, like it shines through. It's so awesome. But I would I would be so much more down to be in a band that is i mean the who's amazing i mean they're they're one of the best to ever do it i would rather be in a band with dudes that i love that is like half as good just <laughs> making butt rock and hanging out yeah and, i mean know, just fortunately uh humbly i feel like we are a little bit better than half as good as the who, you know, I'm not saying we're near as good as the fucking who dude. Almost you're, nobody is. You're in the upper echelon of, well, thanks man. Right that's now. really, that's really kind. Sure. Um, I would much rather hang out with brothers, you know, like, um, and then for, you know, to answer your question about the, a, a new musician trying to do it, you have to be honest with yourself. You have to put everything on paper. Cause, uh, a really good friend of mine, his name's Kyle Thomas. He has, um, a couple, uh, he's more of a country guy, but he has a couple songs that, uh, are really, really good. One's called if I never left Georgia. And then another song, which I fucking love. I show it to everybody. And they're like, this is not, I think I've shown it to you. It's called ghost. And he, he's much further along as a songwriter than I am. He's been doing it way longer than me. And he was like, you have to write everything down and you have to create bad music because if you don't create bad music you're never going to create good music and that's super true you know i have a few songs that nobody will ever hear one note of because they are awful (laughs) awful songs but for every you know i don't even remember what those song titles are because you kind of forget them but like for every song that i have that's like that 
it turns into a, a blood water or smoking whiskey or uh, what's Sky that? Dancer. Sky Dancer. Yeah, you know, like I I love that song. I think it's a good song, you know, um, and I'm very proud of those songs. Um, the other thing you have to do if you are not going to be the Mike Cadigan band or the Andrew Griffin project, you have to be vulnerable and you have to be willing to collaborate. You can't bring something to your band and go, this is the fucking song. Learn it. You go, Hey guys, I have this. What can we do with it? You know, because as soon as you've closed yourself off from collaborating, that's when your song has hit its ceiling. And that's the worst thing that could happen because it's like, well, you know, uh, this song is a good song, but it'll never be a great song until you get like-minded individuals going, well, maybe we try this and you go, yeah, let's try that. And it works. Or you go, ah, you know, that didn't really work, but I'm glad we tried it. And then somebody else goes, what if we try this? And you're like, Ooh, that could be cool. And then you try it and you go, oh, well, that's how that's going to be fucking played. You know what? It, it's to to do this journey solo, unless you are fucking Michael Jackson or Billy Joel, which nobody is, you have to have people in your corner. And that's how you're going to make great music is by collaboration. And you can't be scared of collaboration. You have to put your ego aside and you have to put everything behind you that would keep you from being a team player and go, okay, how can we as a band, how can we as a group make this song the best that it can possibly be? That's a big thing. And I'm, I'm proud that that's how heavy penny writes music, man. Like I usually come up with some lyrics and a simple chord progression. And then I bring it to Nick and Noah and we create something cool. And more times than not, almost every time anybody has something, I can't even tell you the amount of times that somebody has suggested something and it didn't make it into the final song because like-minded people making music that they care about. That's important. So <clears throat> to wrap it up, is there anything heavy Penny's got coming up soon? I know you're working on some things. You want to shout anything out before Man, we close out? Um, we are, uh, you know, like I said, we're making our record. Um, we'd like to get back on it and, you know, get some shows under our belt. Um, we've had a bit of a uh, hiatus, if you will, from the touring and uh, the, the gigging, uh, thanks to this record. But it's almost done. So uh, it's very much so about that time to get on stage again. And I know we're really, really, really antsy. We we've, we've been working on some new material. I mean, the record's about to come out and it'll be a lot of people's first time hearing it, but we've been playing these songs for two years and we're like, well, we're ready to have something new. And so it is going to be kind of funny. Uh, Nick and I were talking about it. We we're like, are we going to play the record when it comes out? Or are we going to play <laughs> the new stuff? Because, you know, people are going to want to hear the record and I don't know. We'll figure I, it out. I know so many bands that have so much good music and there's such a delay on it. It's like, dude, yeah. Put it out into the world. The people want it. Well, We're excited. And when is when is your record dropping, my friend? Uh, great question. Pleasure thrills. That's, is that that's the name of the record? Oh, the no, no, uh, no the next sorry. single. The next single is Pleasure Thrills. Right. The name of the album we have not decided yet. We haven't either. And if we did, I don't know if I'd tell you guys. Um, <laughs> We're kicking around a lot of dumb ideas. We uh, are. All right. The most uh, the most recent dumb idea is uh, a little stiffy. Uh, kind of like that, you know, that or half chub maybe. <laughs> well, half chub's a little too on the <laughs> nose. Half chub, uh, not so self indulgent. That's mm -hmm. one that we've kicked around. Um, not a symphony, um, because it's rock and roll, baby. It's it's not supposed to be perfect. Uh, and then, um, there's always the inside joke of the band. Uh, I don't think it's gonna be the name of the the record, but as I sit here now. Who knows? It might be uh, more far, less close. Wow. Profound. Reminds me of the uh, Pat Metheny record. <laughs> As Wichita Falls. So uh, what is it? I don't know. It's it's bad, dude. It's uh, 
the best album title of all time. Mm. I, I want to hear this first, and then I'm going to give you the best I'm album Tiber. Uh, ty- Tiber? As uh, Wichita, as falls Wichita, so Wichita falls. Yeah, that's bad. What is it again? As falls Wichita, so falls Wichita falls. Well, from 1981. That's not the old ha- the old the old household name family favorite. Uh, I love the Joe Walsh record. Do you know it? The one where he has the like aviator gear on the front. No, that I think that's called Life of Illusion, which that's a great fucking record. Uh, it's the one with the plane on it, and it's called "The Smoker You Drink, The Player You Get." I mean, that's a drunk title if I've ever heard one. We all know <laughs> what it means, but we don't know how to say it. So. Well, I think that's going to wrap things up for this pod. Dude, thanks so much for having me. Thank you, Andrew, for coming on. Always a pleasure. uh, I'm really pumped for Heavy Penny this year. Dude, I'm pumped for Easy Sleeper. I think um, it's going to be a great year for both bands. Hey, new single coming out, Pleasure Thrills. We're going to talk about that soon on the pod. You got an album coming out the end of the year. I do. Summer. Summer, summer. Let's say summer. Summer. I hope summer. Yeah. Uh, A July release sounds hot. In the meantime, you got some stuff that people can check out, right? Yeah, go check out our EP, and uh, a few of those songs will be on the record. Uh, you'll be able to hear what they sounded like, and then here in a couple months, you'll be able to hear what they now sound like. So, All right, folks, we're going to sign off. This is Mike from Easy Sleeper. This is Andrew from Heavy Penny. And y'all have a good night. Just slow down Run towards downtown